Hello and welcome to Rising Match Day this Saturday the 23rd of October. I'm Owen Evans looking ahead to tonight's Rising Match against Sacramento Republic coming up on the show. Rising's last road trip of the regular season in the books. Rick talks his team's depth and different options he has come playoff time. And a roundup of how exactly the playoff picture is looking. But first, let's look back to last week's match in Las Vegas. So Rising's last away match of the regular season, Vegas away, their last visit here had been a draw, rotated squad for Phoenix which saw teenager Niall Dunn handed his first professional start. Phoenix up early, David Egbo getting his first goal since July. That was followed up by Joey Kalistri, who certainly enjoyed his celebration. And by Santi Moa, who apparently needed a bit of a rest after a long week on the road, rising up by three. Quick response thereafter by Leitz's Cal Jennings, scoring not just one, but two before the break to pull his side back into the match. But in the second half, more goals for the visitors, Darnell King with a header to restore the lead to two. And Santi Moa with another goal to put Rising up 5-2. Jennings still not done, he sealed his hat-trick in the 83rd minute. But Luis Manuel Say has found the net shortly after, his first goal in Phoenix colours. So 6-3 the final score, here's a reaction from after the match. I thought that uh, we showed purpose right from the beginning. Um, we talked about starting fast, being aggressive, not worrying so much about um, you know, the tactical aspect of the game but really being who we are and good in transition and uh, uh, we were clinical in front of goal today that was for that was definitely certain but it was nice I, I think the best thing is even with kind of a mixed lineup again you saw a real sense of purpose and, and pride in the way that we play the game so um, you know I, I was a little disappointed at halftime because it looked like we took our foot off the gas but I think as a player it's so difficult when you feel like um, anything you do, you can score goals. And when you're in that position and you just feel like you could turn the gas on and, and get another one whenever you need, I think that's what everybody saw today. When did you find out you were going to start this match? Um, it, was sort of, it was kind of hinted uh, training during the week, but it was yesterday's training where I definitely found out I was going to be starting. And how did Rick break the news to you? Well, it was more of we were doing small sided and I was on the starting 11 team, so I just kind of knew it from there. So, the goal celebration. <laughs> go and play Cornhole. Santa it, gets well, the match. Actually, actually it, it's Bags. I'm from the Midwest, so it's called Bags, not Cornhole. Was that planned? I thought about it before the game, yeah. I thought about it a little bit, yeah. Have you I'm like, about we'll it at all? I'm like, we'll have a little bit of fun. I, like, I can't remember who I told, but I'm like, if I score, I'm going to like take a bag shot. Yeah. Uh, it was top class entertainment. I, at the third one, I kind of was like, I don't want to be disrespectful because I really respect Steve a lot. He's a very, very good coach, and, and um, but I know that they had talked about it, and the, the mattresses were brought up, as was the cornhole. So for them, uh, of course, it's Kalistri. He's one of the most intelligent guys we have, and I'm sure he took full advantage of it. So here's just a little bit more insight from Rick on why he decided to hand Nile his first professional start while on the road. Well, you don't ease into games at home here. Um, Phoenix Rising, there are high, high expectations. And we've played games where we've tried to say, hey, we're going to start. I didn't start Manuel at home in his first game either. And the reason is that 
it gives them a sense of the rest of the team understanding that there's no, there's no, the pressure's off of them. When we're on the road, I know people still expect us to win, but it's difficult. And when it's difficult, you have a tendency to really, you know, uh, focus and concentrate on a super level. Whereas at home, you have to play free and you have to play aggressive. And our fans expect us to go for it all the time. And I thought for Niall at home, that would have been pretty tough. Um, so I, I had, the staff was not kind of, I don't think they really wanted me to start him. I kept asking them for the lineup all week and, and they were talking about Orange County. And, and I said, why did we bring Niall on this trip? I mean, are we really not going to play him? And, and um, you know, I made the decision about a week ago and um, I, on both lineups, to be honest with you, I, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew what I needed to accomplish this, this last week. And, and it was perfect. I mean, um, we did enough against Orange County to probably get a result, but we didn't start the way we usually want to start games. And I was really upset with the guys. So I told them that they needed to treat Vegas, you know, the way that we play and we better start fast. <laughs> and as I said, in the post game interview, I thought they started pretty fast. And now that Rising's put its final road trip of the regular season behind it, what have the coaching staff had to say? I mean, I think right now we're, we're, we're in that playoff mentality, trying to get there, obviously. Uh, we understand that any team we play now uh, can beat you in any given day. And, uh, it's, a, it's one game, right? So uh, getting in that mentality of uh, win or go home, um, and I think we're, we're trying to do that in these last two games as well, trying to claim the top of the West and the top of the USL as well. One thing that we saw even more of in that road trip, John Baccaro in his new role as a number nine. But what kind of an adjustment has it been for him in that position? Uh, I mean, it's a position that I've played before. So obviously uh, I hadn't played it in three years. And uh, right now my focus is on pushing for, for that position and uh, showing that I can play there and, and that I can help the team. Uh, but, you know, um, I'm just taking day by day, trying to improve, trying to uh, help the team. And that hasn't changed from when I was playing midfield to forward. Uh, I'm always striving to, to play and, and get the most minutes I can. I've, I've brought my qualities of a midfielder to that position and uh, I'm not trying to play like a different player. Uh, I'm trying to use those qualities that I had as a midfielder, as a forward. Um, it's not that I'm trying to be a different, completely different player. Obviously, some of the things that I have to do are different, uh, but I'm pretty happy with how things have, have been going and um, looking forward to, to keep playing and, and keep helping the team whenever I can. Bacero pushed up the field thanks to new additions to the squad, but how important is that depth going to be as we enter the playoffs? Uh, it's massive, you know. I mean, I think there was a at one point this season we were kind of questioning our depth, and we didn't know like were we really that deep. I mean, we had a lot of good players in name, but it takes a little bit of time to get used to our style, our system, um, and then and then we had players go out on loan. We we released a player. We brought in two new guys. I mean, these were all things that I thought were very, I, you know, we were very calculated. We knew what we wanted to do and in, in the, in the personalities we needed. And I mean, we got lucky, you know, David is, has been fantastic and Luis has been fantastic, but what it's done is it's helped Arturo as a young pro. It's forcing him to, to compete every day. It's helped Baquero. Now we've moved him to a nine. He's really, I think he's like, reinvigorated um you know I, I think tate and ryan have been competing and it's helping ryan understand that as a young rookie life is not easy um it, it's been a really if i look back on this season it's been a bit of a roller coaster i think emotionally for many of our players but it's been unbelievable that we were sitting here having this discussion with 20 wins um I mean, I think this is fantastic. And uh, I, we, to get 20 wins this year and two years ago, we had more than 20. And it says a lot about uh, the, the quality of the players we have here and the staff and, and what's going on. So the depth of the team is important. It's massive going into playoffs. But, you know, the reality is only 18 guys can dress and, and really only 16 can play. So um, well, we have to make some tough decisions. And how much of an idea does Rick have about the side that he'll put out there when playoffs roll around? 
compared to how much of it is still up for grabs in these last two weeks? Yeah, I, I, I mean, right now, the thing that I'm really excited about is the fact that David and, and Arturo are very different in the way they approach the game. You know, if you're playing a team that sits in a really, really low block and you need somebody to break it down on the dribble and to score a goal from the midfield position, Arturo is your guy. If you're playing somebody that likes to build out of the back and, and open the game a little bit, I think David's speed and quickness is phenomenal and his, his tenacity in defending is is as good as Aiden Quinn's. So um, that gives us a little flexibility there, you know, depending on the opponent. Then you've got right now, Joey Calistri and Solo and, and Darnell, you know, can rotate through that side and, and nothing changes um, up front, you know, between Darren, John and, and David Egbo, I think I've kind of got, you know, very, three very, very different players and, and they bring different characteristics. So it's, uh, and then uh, I think Joey Farrell and Manu have, Manu has really done well and he's really stepped up and he's far more composed on the ball, um, I think, than, than Joey is. And we saw that in one of our games, uh, these teams were pushing us to our right-hand side and in our buildup. So uh, we have to be, we have to look at that and, and I've got to work with Joey, but at the same time, Farrell is spectacular in the air and he's physically dominant and he's, and he's kind of the lion and, and the heart of the team. So you've got to weigh those. If that gives you an indication of, of where we're kind of got some still question marks. Well, let's take a look now at how the playoff picture is shaping up around the rest of the league. We'll start with the race for top spot, Tampa Bay getting their game in hand out of the way facing Miami in midweek not wasting any time with Sabre Guanzati, putting Rowdies up within minutes. Second half, and Guanzati adds another. Before Steven Dos Santos putting the game out of sight, Rowdies win 3-0, bringing them level on points with Phoenix, the Floridian side ahead thanks to their head-to-head -head record. Let's take a look at the race for fourth spot in the Mountain Division during midweek, San Antonio and New Mexico United facing off. The visitors were leading 2-1 in this one, for Oli Wright given a second yellow card just shy of the hour mark. New Mexico make the advantage count, first Chris Weehan from a free kick, then Andrew Tanari on a follow-up, and finally Weehan again at the death to seal it 4-2. Austin travelling to El Paso, they didn't get much luck there. A trio of goals, first Aaron Gomez, then Luis Solignac, then Diego Luna. 3-0 to Locomotive, Bold go home empty-handed. So as it stands, New Mexico in pole position to take the last playoff spot. They're three points clear of Austin, five clear of RGV, although the latter having a game in hand. That could be crucial. RGV hosting New Mexico today at 5.30. A win for the Toros would leave their destiny in their own hands. Bold travel to San Antonio at the same time. So with a handful of teams there looking to make their way in over in the mountain division, what does Rick think is going to happen? I, I We kind of played with this on the weekend. I mean, we were looking at the schedule and who plays who, and we were all trying to like figure it out. And then, you know, New Mexico scores in the last minute to tie San Diego and Austin decides to, you know, start a boxing match in the goal mouth. And that was a crazy game, you know? So I, I have no idea it's the same as ours. I mean, um, we're not sure who's going to be third or fourth in ours. I, I, it looks like Orange County, could, you know, they have a big game on Wednesday with San Diego. It's, it's pretty awesome that in the USL, I think, you know, there's still a lot of games that mean a lot to teams. Um, for us, New Mexico's different. You know, they play a bit more open, a little more possession football. It was an exciting game against them here. Um, RGV, you know, could possibly get in. They're pretty good on the counterattack. That could be dangerous. And Austin is probably one of the most veteran teams in the league. And the last time we played Austin in a playoff game, I think we're still taking penalty kicks. So um, it's been, uh, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. And, um, you know, I think, I don't think San Antonio and Colorado Springs can end up fourth. I'm not sure. But um, so my guess is it'll be one of those three. And, it looks like New Mexico's got the inside track right now. 
We're looking to tonight, Sacramento Republic taking on Phoenix. What should we expect out of the opposition? They're a tough team, uh, no matter where, where they are in the table. It's, it's always one of our toughest games. Um, you know, they're, they're men, you know, they're, they, they're, they're in a mission right now. They're fighting to, to get in playoffs still. And um, they're, they're, they have really, really talented players. And, and, and it's a team that uh, it's really tough to break down. And, and you know, uh, it's going to be a, a good game for us. And for me, I think it, it, it's, it could be like a playoff game, you know, because it's one of those teams that um, can, can score in any given time. And, and you know, especially at home, uh, we have that extra push from the fans. And, uh, and I think it's a great preparation for us. And finally, with tonight's opposition fighting for any chance of making the playoffs, they need to win tonight to even stand a chance come tomorrow. Should we expect them to be up for it, perhaps more than Rising will be? I don't think so. I mean, uh, we're still playing for things. Uh, we're still playing to, as I said, to be top of the West, and, and we're still pushing to be the top of the USL. So um, I don't think it was, who's fighting for more, but I know the the mentality in, in inside our locker room is that we still need to win the last two games that we have uh, to give our, ourselves the best chance to be at home uh, from, from, from here on forward. That's all from me. Tonight's game, a 7.30pm kickoff at Wild Horse Pass. Enjoy the match. Goodbye.